Real quick, I want to tell you about a moment that changed my entire perception about a guitar. Well, more specifically, an entire group of guitars. You might know them because they're called PRS. What you got to know is that 2022 was actually quite the year for the guitar world, and everyone sort of had their thing. Tim Henson had just released his nylon string signature, and there was kind of pandemonium in the streets and trying to acquire one. Fender had just released their 40th anniversary Squires, which I actually owned and had a lot of thoughts on. Tell me in the comments if you want to hear those. And finally, we had the release of what was undoubtedly the highest selling and most coveted guitar of the year. Now I've talked about this before, but to quickly summarize, it felt like this really cool moment. You go from the flagship model feeling like it was this untouchable thing to now having a gateway into what PRS was unprivately trying to make into this new standard for the S-style guitar. I know it, you know it, I start logging into these forums and everyone's asking a million different questions. Is it a Strat? Is it not a Strat? Some people are saying the tuners look really cheap. Some people are saying it doesn't even matter because the guitar sounds so good. Basically, every Everyone had an opinion and I was no different. And because of that, I wanted, no wait, I needed to get my hands on one so that I could either confirm or deny what everyone was saying. Now, unfortunately, what I was quite naive to was the fact that it was 2022 and that if you logged into your internet machine to try and get one of these silver skies, every single website gave you the same exact notice. Back ordered until 2020. 33. So I decided to settle for what at the time was the next best alternative. I would borrow one from a friend. So I start inputting his address into my Google Maps and I start driving to his house. And I walk in, I kick that door right down, I grab the Silver Sky and I start driving back. And my entire drive back, my heart is just pounding like, is this thing really going to live up to everything they say it is or that I think it is? And for the most part, it did. It was definitely different from what I was expecting with the flagship Silver Sky just because this one had a satin neck. But for the most part, because of the tones I was was getting and the price point compared to the other one, it seemed like a steal. I mean, I liked it so much that I think I really started to take the deep dive into the world of the SE and doing more research. Now, part of this was because long ago, many years before the SE Silver Sky, I was the proud owner of an SE Custom 24. And although I find most of my guitar playing pretty cringy to watch, I did really enjoy that guitar. However, when comparing it to the regular Custom 24 and even the S2 Custom 24, the gap seemed way wider than the gap between the SE Silver Sky and the regular Silver Sky. And I was genuinely intrigued by all of this. And all I wanted to do was ask myself this one question, was the SE Silver Sky just a one-off for the SE line? But then something interesting happened we got an announcement. I'm sure there were a lot of people who had anticipated this, but I must have been asleep when it actually happened because by the time I got word of things, it had already exploded. Now, the big news was that PRS had recently come out with an SE version of their David Grissom model, which was really cool because the DGT didn't have an S2 model. So it was kind of like that feeling of getting the core Silver Sky down to a more affordable level. I remember just thinking to myself constantly, how crazy would it be to actually get your hands on one of those SE DGTs? But ladies and gentlemen, crazy would have to wait because, spoiler alert, this story isn't about the SE DGT. You see, this was crazy because along with the SE DGT, PRS had actually decided to release one more guitar, a guitar that much like the core model of the DGT, this guitar didn't have an SE version. You're probably aware of it. It's called the McCarty. And what you gotta know is that to someone like me, this was a really big deal because prior to the original Silver Sky dropping, if you had asked me, and I think a lot of people, what is the prototypical PRS? What is the shape and what is the sound that everyone thinks of when they think of a Paul Reed Smith? They probably would have said a McCarty. And yes, for a second, I also probably would have said the Santana, but that's only because Game of Love is one of the biggest bops of the last 25 years. But I got lucky and I instantly got my hands on one. And the first thing I wanted to do was to make a video comparing it to my S2 McCarty. 594. I would listen to the different recordings back and forth in between takes and something became unmistakably clear. The moment had come when I was vehemently sure that the gap I had found in previous years surrounding the Custom 24 had narrowed drastically. I mean, the gap had narrowed dramatically and depending on the models, some of the SEs were actually getting pretty close. But even more than that, I feel like it gave the SEs a certain amount of legitimacy, like I could no longer look at them as just this alternative to the S2 or the core model, but these guitars, specifically 594 SE McCarty kind of became their own thing. And of course, it started with the construction. It was like everything that I was used to from higher end PRSs, mahogany neck, mahogany body. But the real chef's kiss was when I got to the pickups, which are the 5815s, and sort of immediately realized that these are not just random SE versions of pickups. And because of that, the sound was just there. And I want to show you, but I haven't changed the strings in like eight months. <laughs> I love a top loader.
Let's be totally honest. I would be doing you a complete disservice if I didn't at least mention the coil tap. Now, in my experience, the idea of a coil tap is almost never a black and white issue. However, when it comes to this specific model, if you were to ask me the question, Michael, how much do you actually use the coil tap? The answer would be a lot, but that's not necessarily the full story. And that's because when it comes to this guitar, I tend to think that the coil tap is more functional than it is good. It's less about me saying I dislike the sound because I love what I was just playing and hearing out of the speakers. More about recognizing just how many different scenarios this guitar could work in. Essentially, what I'm saying is it's not my favorite coil tap that I've ever used used on a PRS pickup, but it sounds great. And when I've needed it in live setting, it has been there. So construction was great, tone was great, unsurprising. But I think the real thing I had to get into was aesthetics. And I think over the past year or two, that's been something that I've been really trying to come to terms with the fact that we all like to pretend all the time that aesthetics don't matter. It's just about the sound of the guitar, but it's not. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. I don't mean to make this part straight comparison. I think that most people know that the curves on the bodies of the SEs are never quite as dramatic as the S2 or the chorus. But the curve was never really actually a deal breaker for me. What was a deal breaker for me with this guitar is actually the finish. Every single one of my friends, they come in, they take this off the wall, they start to play it and they're like, dude, I think this thing sounds amazing and I think it's your best looking guitar, but I just disagree. I don't know, I just think that the black and gold burst looks way better. But here's the thing, if I were to sum all of this up trying to be as honest as possible, I would tell you immediately, this is not my favorite SE. I think I like the DGT way more. I like the way it looks, I like the way it sounds better, and I like that it has the trim system. But that in no way takes away from what this guitar is to me. This is the guitar that made me completely reevaluate the SE line and where PRS was going with it, which is really funny to think about because like I was saying before, I do like the GGT better, but I do think this is closer to the S2 and to the core models simply because there is no S2 for the DGT and you're going all the way to the core model with the different pickups. And like I said, I don't want to come off ragging on this guitar just because I don't like it quite as much as the DGT. It's an excellent sounding, excellently built guitar. From the pickups, the coil split to the way it looks, it completely changed everything I thought coming from the SE Custom 24 all those years ago. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what I think. What matters is what you think. So let me know in the comments, what do you think is the top tier PRS SE guitar? Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I wanted to take down the 594 for the first time in a while, and I wanted to be able to talk about it on its own, not in concordance with the S2 like I did in a video about six or seven months ago. If you wanna know anything more about the McCarty 594 SE, the links are in the description. Make sure to check it out. One of the best ways to support the channel, if that's something you wanna do, or if you're just curious about any of the other gear I used in this video, make sure to check out those links. Like and subscribe if you had a good time, and most importantly, like most important of all, have a fantastic day. Thank you.